As with every project of mine, having an idea and actually turning that idea into reality might not always work out. Sometimes ideas fail for a multitude of reasons. Thankfully, this one was pretty much a success as I hoped it would be. Along the way, I've learned quite a few things doing these capsule lamps, which I will share with you. So watch till the end and make sure you subscribe along the way. Let's get to it. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. More on that later. First, there is always a concept and prototype. A while back, I bought some small remote operated LED capsules off eBay, which were like 17 euros for four of them, knowing that I wanted to do an LED capsule lamp. You know me and my love for lamps. So having those lamps gave me the diameter I needed for the capsule. I went into Fusion 360 and designed the inner part of the capsule to the right measurements, along with the end parts with a screw fit end cap. The design of the capsule is relatively simple and will serve as the mold for which to pour the resin in. I designed it with an extra part at the top in order to make sure that I have somewhere to grip while turning it to polish it on the lathe. Having finished the design, I threw it on my trusty Mark 2.5S and printed it out in PLA. Now, while that was printing, I also did a quick enclosure for it as well, so I have somewhere to pour the silicone in for the mold. Once both printed, I took the capsule print and gave it a light sand down and gave it a few coats of thick primer. Then, of course, sanding it again. Let it to dry and sand it down again, and this time using my lathe to make it a bit easier. As I mentioned, I did a few mistakes along the way, and one of them was that I should have spent a bit more time in applying more coats of primer and much more polishing to get that perfect mirror finish. However, since I have a lathe, the sanding part tends to be a bit easier for cylindrical part. Once that was done, I wrapped some tape around the mold cylinder and planted the capsule mold with some double-sided tape to keep it in place and not float up. I then went ahead and poured some silicone, mixed it well, and then mixed it some more. Threw it in my vacuum chamber and waited until all the bubbles disappeared. I poured the silicone into the mold and left it there for 24 hours to fully dry. The next morning I proceeded to remove the outer casing of the mold and also remove the cylinder from the inside. Here is the first lesson when it comes to silicone molds that I learned. When you are not using it or as soon as you remove whatever is in it, turn it upside down to prevent any fine dust from going inside as intricate molds can be a pain to clean. Not only that, if you pour clear resin inside, those little debris will just make your life hell. Having done the mold successfully, it was time to design what I wanted inside. The idea was to always have a DNA style capsule. However, seeing as it's Valentine, I figured this would also be an awesome gift to give, especially since my daughter asked me for one. You know what is also a nice gift to give? Two weeks of free premium membership to Skillshare, which is today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You want to learn how to design stuff specifically for 3D printing in Fusion 360? Skillshare has some amazing classes by Vladimir Mariano, which will give you a step-by-step -step guide on the ins and outs of designing for 3D printing specifically which, as we know, can be quite tricky sometimes with all the overhangs and the bridging. Now, I'm currently going through several classes related to resin casting as it's a great medium to add to any project, but requires quite a bit of knowledge and knowing some tricks to work with it always come in handy. Whatever your desire to learn is, whether it's woodworking, photography, music, illustration, calligraphy, Skillshare has thousands of classes available at your disposal. This means that you are sure to find a class that will inspire you and your creativity. The first 1,000 of my subscribers and viewers to click the link in the video description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity as well. Thank you, Skillshare. Since MetaHacker sent me their new MH build resins to try, I figured I would use them, especially since the pink they have look absolutely stunning. I printed my first DNA strand in the pink so I can test it out using my Prusa SL1. It turned out to be a bit chunky as a DNA strand, but since the first one was going to be a test, I wasn't too bothered. Once it was printed and cleaned, I put it inside the mold and held it down with tape. Now, I wasn't sure exactly whether or not it would try to float or not, but you know, better safe than sorry. I also 
never use the outer cover of the mold to make sure that the mold doesn't deform in any way during the resin curing process. I then mixed some resin and threw that in the vacuum chamber in order to remove all the happy bubbles. After some very slow pouring, I left it overnight to cure completely. It's a slow curing resin, so any air bubbles which remain tend to float up to the surface. The next morning I removed all the tape and proceeded to remove the resin for the mold. I had a bit of a hard time here as there was quite a lot of air suction from the bottom, so I decided to cut a small slit in the bottom of the mold to let the air in and this made my life so much easier. I then cut off the excess DNA strand and put the capsule on my turning lathe. The process is not too long, but I would recommend you take your time here. If I had spent more time in the original capsule model with the primer and sanding, I would have been able to avoid most of the sanding as it would have been a near perfect mirror finish. I started off with 100 grit sandpaper and worked my way up slowly to about 7000 grit then use some fine sanding paste and the last step was polish. The result was already very promising. Now knowing of course, I need to spend more time polishing in the next one that I do. I then cover the capsule with some masking tape to protect the finish and cut off the excess bit at the bottom and then sanded that down as best as I could. Having had a very successful test, it was time to proceed with printing more stuff to do on the capsule. Once again, I printed the chained hearts on the SL1, and after that was finished, I cleaned out the vat and poured in some blue Meta Hackers build resin. Now, when it comes to the blue resin, I did have some issues. The first print I did was very weak in color, which told me that I didn't shake the resin bag long enough as the pigment kind of separated. So I remixed the bag this time with lots of shaking and I reprinted. The color was a lot better. However, I noticed that the pigment was settling at the bottom of the vat during the print. In fact, you can see some parts of the print has stronger coloring. Now, I don't know if this was just the bad batch or maybe because I've had it sitting for a while before I actually used it, but I thought I'd let you know. My next conundrum was to figure out how to suspend the hearts inside the resin. Now, st still not knowing whether a resin print would float or sink inside casting resin, I decided to use some fishing line with a tiny droplet of glue at the top and the bottom to keep it in place within the resin while it's setting. In my mind, this was due to the fact that I was hoping that the fishing line would kind of disappear inside the resin. Eventually, I find out that it wouldn't completely disappear. After fiddling around with the glue and activator and then fiddling around some more with the position of the hearts, it was time for some resin pouring, waiting and then polishing. Now for the capsule ends, I had to modify the diameter where the resin capsule goes in. Obviously, the more you sand, the smaller the diameter becomes. So I modified the inner diameter to accommodate the capsule in a snug fit in order to avoid having to glue it or use any kind of screws. That way, it can be changed even in the future if I decide to change the design of the cap. So I will also include a step files for the project just in case anyone wants to try it out. Assembly of the lamp is very easy. You simply take apart the LED puck by removing the three screws holding it in place and transferring that into the capsule end. You can use some hot glue to hold it in place, but this is not necessary as once you screw on the end cap, it won't go anywhere. If you want more lights, you can simply install another LED puck on the top part since they're exactly the same um, of the capsule. Once all that is done, simply grab the LED remote and set the mood. And if you have more than one, you can control them with just one remote.
And that is it. Now in hindsight, I could have possibly saved myself about 80% of the work by simply using PVC pipe. Um, but that didn't really occur to me. However, I'm going to take it with a pinch of salt because ultimately I've learned a few things along the way regarding um, um, silicone casting and you know how to use it, what's the best practices, well kind of. A few pointers I want to give to you guys when um, mixing resin or casting resin at least. Make sure you mix it well, like really, really well. If it tells you to mix for three minutes, mix for five because you really want to mix it well, first of all, um, to make sure that it hardens properly. And also if you don't mix it well, you get like a bit of a wavy kind of effect uh, inside the clear resin, which doesn't look really good if you want a perfect mirror effect. Now in my case, I really could have spent a bit more time on these, especially sanding on the outside because I had bubbles form, little bubbles form, on the outer layer uh, of the um, of the silicone mold inside so and that's partly due to the fact that I wasn't taking care of the mold itself I was in the garage was a bit dusty you know dust settles in there so just make sure you turn it upside down or clean it well before you use it in my case the best way I found to clean it is using a kind of bunched up inside out tape to get everything to stick to the tape. But that is it for today. We've learned a few lessons along the way. It'll get better every time I do this. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you to my Patreons and my members for supporting me and this channel. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. And as always, happy making guys.